that, except for that that means that I have to fucking start a business while working this other teaching, which is a full-time job, then also while doing DoorDash to solve the immediate um, financial issues and still finding time to work on my art, which matters to me and keeps my soul happy. So in addition to all those things to now start another thing from the ground up whilst doing podcasting, like I was like, yeah, that is a good idea. And that would definitely work, but Oh my God, the effort. I'm fucking there's, tired. There's, there's 24 hours in a day, bro. There's so much time. Like, like I, I, can't, I can't even, I'm you. maximizing my day. I got up at four 30 in the morning this morning. I ran it's three and a half started. miles. Mm-hmm. Then I went to work. I graded all my kids' shit. Then I drove right back here, fucking came here, went for a quick walk because I had to go talk. I went to go chat up the girl at the guard desk, guard booth. No, oh, yeah, you're trying to hit on your guard, your guard booth, girl? I, <laughs> no, I laid, I laid the groundwork for this like a month ago. I came <laughs> home super – she's like cute and like tattooed and like kind of looking like my type of girl. And like we wave and like it's friendly, but I haven't talked to her. But like three-ish weeks ago – I had that fucking shady DoorDash delivery that I thought I was going to get mugged, but then it canceled. And I wound up with a, like a case of Taco Bell. So now my shift is done. It's like 1030 at night on a Saturday. I drive through and there she is. And I was like, I know what I'm doing with these tacos. So I <laughs> roll down the window. And I'm just like, hey. She's like, hi. I'm like, you hungry? She's like, always. I'm always. Like, Boom. Here's That's some- the best answer. Best yeah. answer. <laughs> boom here's a whole suitcase of tacos and she's like holy shit really i was like yeah and then i gave her the bag of cinnamon twists too she's like oh my god you just made me right and you, gave her, you gave her that cinnamon twist yeah <laughs> it was the actual one not the metaphorical <laughs> but that was it i just dropped the food and then i just left and now i've seen her a couple times i waved whatever so i went and i saw that she was working the booth when i came in and i was okay. like Today. I'm fucking say hi today and at least find out this chick's name. And so I did. I took the loop, walked around, and like I came, she came walking right out. It was very like it was like super smooth and easy. And okay. like I got her up for like a couple minutes. Her name is Sarah. Sarah. Um, mm-hmm. All right. Mm-hmm. And then I was like, all right, I gotta go. Cause I had this to get to, but also cause like no just- lying, by the way, I just want I just want to mention because I know you noticed probably that the red light's on. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to Frankly. <laughs> um, well, frankly it went really well i think frankly i'm thinking so so i didn't i had my date last week with amy tell us about that man it went extremely well freaking we went to uh uh dave and busters we, we hung out for like four hours we hung out and we got a drink we were like half hour in 45 minutes and we're like yo let's go play games and we walked into the games and we were walking towards them and we were just talking still and talking still and talking still and five ten minutes go and I'm like, let's just go sit back down and talk more because we weren't even playing games we were just fucking yeah. chatting i was like yo this is going real fucking well we ate we talked we, we went and played more games we came to so and then you seen the pictures that i threw up the other day we went to an asylum yeah i seen the, the asylum. <laughs> so, so our second date was going and hanging out in an abandoned king's park asylum and I then, feel like that's such a baller move Yo, right? She lives around the corner from it. So it wasn't my call. She lives around the corner from it. So she was like, yo, I live around the corner. I walk around there all the time. And I was like, yo, me and my friends used to hang out there all the time. Let's go. His friends used to hang out there all the time. That was a point of bonding when I got to college because I met people from like Chautauqua and Stony Brook uh-huh. and shit. And they're like, you break into King's Park? Oh, we yeah. broke into King's Park too. You know the spot up by the morgue with the trays? Yeah, you got to Were, you there? Were you there the night that we all got fucking – so there was a bunch of us. I know Brian might have been there. Jamie might have been there. Fucking there was a ton of us there. There's eight or nine of us there. And, and, and half of us got into the building, not me, and ha- the other half – ran away and the cops showed up and they had spotlights on the building all night were you there that yes, night i was there i got into the building you were one of the ones that got it i was one of the ones that did not get into the building we, we watched <laughs> we watched from the rooftop yeah waited for them to leave and we who were, were you with? who were you I with have no idea and i don't remember who i was with <laughs> Devin, i think Devin seastone and i think i might have been with brian monaco Jamie yeah. McGarvey, I'm maybe? Outside. I, I, I don't remember. But I was telling this girl when we went there the other day, I was telling her that story. I was like, yo, one of the first times I was ever here, I did. we went to that that alcove where we broke in. We were near the church entrance. There's this little church in an alcove where you 
where you, we all like tore a, a plank of wood off and some of y'all got in and some of us ran away. And I was telling her this story and like, man, the fucking, the, the memories are so vivid of like what I was doing, but it's not vivid about who I was with. And that's so weird. <laughs> that is strange. Maybe you were just so like hyper-focused on like, because you were running from the police, you were just yeah. like, that was all the details you were absorbing was like okay and then i jumped over a fence and then i got down a hill like yeah the hill is very vivid the, the fucking yeah. giant fucking stones that we hid behind are very vivid yeah, yeah. no but you were it's so crazy i'm so glad you were there that night that's so funny <laughs> but we didn't go in so so we went there so our first date was real good we went to dave and buster's we hung out and then oh, we if you can get a girl that's gonna go with you to a mental asylum uh-huh and then we and then lead the way a little, you know, like, so like we were walking around and then we were kind of like very like on the beaten path, like where everyone goes. And then like, we didn't go in, we didn't do anything illegal, but like sh she was the one that's like, yo, let's go up to the building. Like she was leading me towards the building. I was like, all right, okay, <laughs> cool. <laughs> so it was that's good. good. <laughs> I'm going to show you, I'm not afraid. Like, yeah, right, yeah. cool. we close to, I don't know if you watched the videos. We, we can't, we could have jumped into a window or two. Because nice. we're adults with children, we we decided yeah. that was against I feel our, like, our I better feel like a really reasonable line in the sand to draw. Yeah, like, yeah, exactly. You walk, you walk right. It's like it's like zoo rules. You can walk right up to the fucking fence that has the tiger in it. Just don't climb into the cage. You know. But here's the thing that blew my mind when we used to go back th that night we're talking about right now. We like broke a plane the open the window yeah there's no wood on the windows anymore every single first floor window is wide open now you could walk it's, in everywhere it's they just got tired of replacing it I'm, I'm sure they did yeah exactly <laughs> like every time we put it up they're just gonna rip it down fucking plywood gets more and more expensive every time we go yeah fuck it like they're the but, but here's the other thing. I brought this up to Amy while we were there, and she's like, well, that's because everyone's just – all the kids are just playing video games now. And I was like, oh, you're right. There's not as many kids doing this now as there was when we were doing it either, I think is the thing. Yeah, but, I mean, there's still vagrants and homeless. And, there uh, are, but, but they hope that those – everyone um, – security hopes that they die in the building. They don't mind. <laughs> they don't mind if they fall down an air shaft, uh, like a, a, a shaft. Sure. <laughs> I guess there'll be no public outcry for it either, which is sad. Right. So yeah, fair, I suppose. Cruel, but fair. <laughs> Jesus, I got dark. Yeah, it did. That, that's how my yeah. week's gone, though. Uh, uh, yeah. How was your week gone besides that? It was all right, man. Other than the, the crazy Nashville shakeup, which I'm kind of over now, uh, it's just been a regular week. It's just been kind of high octane. I'm um, right. pushing the kids really hard to try and get them to finish everything before we all go for spring break next week. Yeah. Um, That's crazy that it's spring break already. <sighs> the, the elementary school kids, my daughter just had winter break a week ago. <laughs> well, we ain't got, yo, winter's over here, man. Yeah. <laughs> We had we had our nice four weeks of hoodie weather, and now it's back to being eighty all day. I know I have friends that I work with that are in Arkansas or Texas or whatever that are sending me seventy eighty. I'm like it's thirty five. It's so warm, yeah. <laughs> but definitely not eighty yet. It's a bummer. I this is my favorite time to be here. A lot of the time, it's just really uncomfortable to be here. And then this is the only time where there's like a nice cool breeze that occasionally blows, and you get like air moving instead of just holding water in the sky yeah. but you know it's all good so yeah spring break's cool the kids are both getting better and worse simultaneously so like the ones that live in their phone that are really up their own ass now but the ones who are like into it are like really into it and i have kids in my class all day long now they show up before the first bell and then they don't leave they hang out at lunch and then Oops, i didn't mean to share that yet Oh, look at that. It's me. Uh, no, keep going. I didn't mean to throw that on screen yet. <laughs> yeah, so, you know, it's cool, though. It's cool. It's good. I'm enjoying it. That is good. 
Uh, but I figured the next thing we could do is like catch each other up on our, our what we've been working on. And like I watched your your most recent Hydra Shark video, and I hadn't thought that that's what it was. You didn't. I don't know if you necessarily said that it was a shark the first time we talked about it. That's cool. Hydra Shark, so cool. <laughs> yeah, thank you. So I. Uh, the first time we talked about it, I don't think they were sharks. Then did you I, not know it was a shark at that point? I didn't. So okay. what had happened was before this point, because once I started all this, I knew. But like when it was just headless necks, I was staring at it, sitting in my chair, looking at it from across the room, just kind of contemplating the ifs and how I was going to approach it and what they were going to look like. And kind of like a bolt of lightning. It just was like, oh. Obviously, they need to be sharks. <laughs> okay. So that and, wasn't what it was in the dream? Because you said this came from a dream. So this is like uh, in the no. dream, did you not even know what it was? It was just a vision? Like, no, this one is not dream related. The last one was. You have said it was. Dream. Okay. Maybe I missed this it. This is just like, honestly, Frank, when I close my eyes at night, I see this stuff. So yeah. it just came to me. Okay. Um, how far, how far, how far along do you think you are? Like, you look like. Because even when I when you posted, this is the third video I feel like you've posted of this, right? Right, I think so. And so the first one I even said, I was like, good job, it, it's coming along well. And whenever I say it's coming along well to an artist, I feel like that might be like offensive. Because I'm like, oh, are they done? Like, clearly you weren't done. <laughs> and no, I well, you know weren't. what? Yeah, I don't ever, like when I'm done, I'm, I'm announcing it. Like, it's done. <laughs> <laughs> yeah this though this is there is so so much more that's gonna happen with this it's going to get real weird and real crazy and a little bit gross that's that was the question how far along do you think you are at this point 50 percent, 75 60 30 30 or 40 Oh wow, that that little? I would have expected more actually. Wow. No, nah, man, I'm telling you. There's and and right now I'm 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 making the decision in my head. And so far I've had one other person encourage me in a specific direction. I am contemplating not showing any more updates. No, not, I, think I will I will take the video and I will take the pictures of the progression. But what I'm contemplating doing is just leaving this like a dangling participle and wham, I want to smash you guys in the face with the whole rest of it. I, 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 I like wholeheartedly disagree. I okay. so disagree with that. Okay. Because, because I've seen some of your really, really extensive art pieces just at the end. And I'm so impressed by them. But – Watching you make this, I'm more impressed by. Oh, I'm yeah? Significantly more impressed by. And I've said that to you about what we're doing in this podcast. I think it's almost more impressive to watch the process of creating something than it is to watch the end product. And I think that people watching us stumble upon our conversations and find our groove and get a podcast created is more interesting than just having a polished podcast. And I similarly think that watching you make this is more interesting than just seeing the end product. So I think you should continue to release videos just like you have been. Okay. You know what? I really support that line of thinking. And now that you've said it out loud, I think I agree a hundred percent. So yeah, you just swung me back the entire other way to the other side. Like think about think about the emotional attachment someone might get to this. Like like so so did you watch me last year when I started posting about Jeffrey, my my avocado tree um, on, on Facebook? I think so. People, I think that's people, all really if you think so, then you didn't. People got emotionally invested in my avocado that I sprouted. And and like I sprouted one and I started taking pictures of it and it had leaves and it had things and then it, and it died this year. And so I'm fucking sad. And but people were like, oh my God, you're avocado. And so like watching something progress is so cool. And you're more likely 
to continue to make videos of the progression of art and then find a buyer because they were like, oh shit, I watched that be a blank canvas. And now I watched it be something. Someone's going to watch seven, eight, nine, ten 10 videos and then be like, I want to buy that. Yeah. That, right. That's likely then someone that would just look at it and be like, look at it and see it and, and have no connection to it. And they're going to have no meaning. It's yeah, going to have no meaning to them. It's going to be beautiful, but it has no meaning. Like right. you're not, a, you're not a famous artist. It's not, it's not a piece of some sort of uh, character or something that people have feelings about. It's something completely that they are detached to. So you have to find a way for them to have an attachment to it. And that is showing them the creation. The process. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that all makes perfect sense to me. I'm totally in. Yeah. Thank you. No problem. You just changed, <laughs> you just changed my mind on the subject irrevocably. Uh, bro, I would watch because, like, I've looked at all the pictures that you've made, and I've loved them. But I've really, really been into these videos, and so, like, I know if I am, yeah. Uh, so, what I do for my job is we extrapolate data that we collect to like make it seem about how how that would be the mass audience. So, I think if I am into something three out of 10 people would be out of, into it or something. You know what it's like? If I'm yeah, really yeah. into this, and I'm not really into a lot of things. Like, I'm like so for me to be really into, like... <laughs> so, yeah, I hear you saying. Yeah, man. I mean, and I get good response from doing this. Like, I get feedback from people. It's all positive. Like, and people that I don't normally interact with on the gram do, like, message me and be like, love these videos, blah, blah, blah. So I agree. I think you're right. I think it was a foolish notion. Uh, not that it was foolish, but it was yeah. it was it was half it was baked. We'll half baked. Yeah, could be, could be. So I went to the farm today. I I went and chilled on the farm. I like your very white hoodie. Yeah, no, bro. I'm still wearing it right this second, right? That's yeah. True. It's it's an apple hoodie. It's it's from my job. <laughs> it's so white, and I'm so proud that I've kept it so white. And it's uh <laughs> yeah. But uh, I'm so excited. I feel like that one time, but I fucking tie dyed it like a crazy person. <laughs> if it ever gets too dirty or messed up, I will tie dye it. Yeah, definitely. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, so I went by the farm uh, just to check it out because I was feeling bored. And then I ran into, I didn't put the pictures up, but I ran into Carlos and Nelson in the greenhouse and they're planting stuff and we're ready to start farming again. So, uh, and then I went to the brewery, the spider bite brewery. And uh, I just kind of had a fun day. I just kind of, oh, whoops, that's not what I was going for. I just kind of had a simple, fun day. Beer and plants. I took off from work. <laughs> nice. Yeah, yeah. Oh, and, and the brewery every all the time has these smorgasbords. How are you going to fucking question that? <laughs> I mean, I don't think you can. I think that to question that is questionable. Right, right, right. I mean, that looks delicious. Hungry. Right, I made some 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 nachos. I had a piece of racetrack gas station buffalo chicken pizza earlier, and it was so fucking good that I don't even understand how it was gas station pizza. <laughs> that makes me that that reminds me of like uh, 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 Cobra Kai. You know what I'm saying, Johnny? Yeah, yeah. He goes to the gas station and he gets pizza. Yeah, I I live on a lot of gas station food. I live on 7-Eleven food because I live right across the street from a 7-Eleven. So I, go I mean, just how like the other – one of the other episodes you were referring to Tinder as like a blanket for all of those things. The gas station is 7-Eleven, yeah, yeah. Same same, you know, so like 7-Eleven turkey sandwiches and Italian subs or the fucking – any gas station will sell you a turkey sandwich now or like the chicken sandwiches or the cheeseburgers or fucking these slices of pizza. I mean, the slices of pizza, they're not real pizza, but it's more real than like you would get at Little Caesars or fucking Hungry Howie's. It's real. I deliver, I deliver Little Caesars pizza. The shit is so greasy that by the time I get where I'm going, the boxes are soaking wet. I'm it's telling you, nasty. <laughs> the the Seven Eleven pizza is real good if you get it right away, and they'll actually make whole pies for you 
So yeah. they sell pies in the like to go section, and you can ask them to just put it in the, in the oven. oven. Yeah, it's fucking bomb when it comes right out. For it's five like dollars. <laughs> you can't go fucking wrong, man. I'm telling like, you. People look at me like I'm crazy when I'm like, no, I like gas station food. They're like, what? I'm like, yeah, dude. It's not only do I no 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 like is the wrong word. I fucking love I it. Prefer. I prefer gas station food like i'm like i go i go to the deli around the corner and i pay like 12 dollars for a sandwich and then i go to 7-eleven and pay four dollars for the same sandwich but like pre-packaged i'm like this shit is fucking good like <laughs> 349 you get a fucking you get a six inch sub tell me about it you know? yeah i live that shit i live that life i think it was me and you that were chatting it might have been me and you i chat uh uh, we were chatting about like end of the world shit or whatever. I forget. Maybe it was someone else. But I was like, yo, I can't even go without going to 7-Eleven twice a day, let alone fucking like being prepared for the end of the world. Yeah. Like, <laughs> like, I'm not prepped for the that. The end of the world plan is to go take over a 7-Eleven. And yeah, just, that's like, my end of the world plan. That's what I learned yeah. after COVID. I say COVID because that's how old people say it. Um, <laughs> that's what I learned after COVID is that um, like – I used to be a prepper. I used to have like bags of food and like masks. I had masks for Ebola, like N95 masks and um, bug out bags and, and sleeping bags and uh, fire starters and all this shit. And then COVID happened and it was like the fucking end of the world. Like, and like ever the lines around Costco were fucking like 3000 people. And like, we were all scared. And, and like at the end of the day, the only thing that ran out was toilet paper sometimes. <laughs> like you know and, what? <laughs> I had the inside track on that. Me too. <laughs> because I knew that even if it wasn't on the shelf in supermarkets, you know where I got my fucking toilet paper? Dollar store. Motherfucking 7 Eleven. I got mine from the dollar store. It never once sold out. Never. Because <laughs> no one knows you can get toilet paper in 7 Eleven, but it's down. And apparently, no one knew that you could get it at the dollar store. I never yeah. once had a problem. 7 Eleven's a fucking pro tip, though. <laughs> Back pocket that shit. So, like, Bedlam was happening. I'll walk into Sav's, like, whistling. Go right. grab it. And it's like the four pack, too. So, it ain't even like you're getting individual rolls. You're good for a while. I'm telling you. But that's the thing I learned is that, like, we could sit here and be scared of the end of the world and prep for it. But at the end of the day, like, the supply chain will probably stay intact and we'll probably still be able to get the basic necessities. Us as Americans, we're very spoiled. We're going to be like, we're going to have the basic necessities, meaning we won't have Oreos and shit, but we're going to have what we need. And like, and so I'm not scared anymore. I used to be scared of end of the world type shit. And now that we've experienced an end of the world type thing, I'm not scared. And don't get me wrong. Go on. I'm sorry. Here's Here's my thought is, at this point, our society is so far advanced that any real end of the world that would be a problem for us is not an end of the world that you, Frank Soma, could fucking really logistically prepare for anyway. Exactly. Right. You just like, that's that. like we are really fucked. Right. Type of shit. Like so zombie so bears. So either you have to be trustful that the system is strong enough that it'll survive or you have to be like, in the middle of the woods with your bow and arrow and have like a thousand years worth of survival prep stuff. Yeah. Right. I used to watch, like, you have to be like a less Stroud survivor man. type. Exactly. I used to watch, um, uh, the, the Netflix show that it was like, um, uh, uh, end of the world survivor I forget what it was called, but yeah. it, they would rate you at the end of the show and people who had like, aqua yeah, I pot, show. people who had like, full farms and aquaponic setups and like spirulina farms and like you know guns and like gold they they would rate them they'd be like you would survive nine months at the end of the world and so that's what ended it for me i was like they would survive nine months and they have a million dollars worth of preparation yeah why do i even care to survive those nine months i'd rather die i'd rather just be dead in the first wave then waste all that money and just live nine months. Like, you, know what, you know what I trust, Frank? What's that? I, I trust corporate greed. Yeah, me too. Me I too, bro. Trust, <laughs> I trust that the corporations are not going to allow their bottom line to fucking take too hard a dip 
and that they will figure out what they need to do to make sure that we don't even run out of Oreos. That's what I trust. I'm I so trust all and that's the that's greedy the bastards are not going to let their fucking stock drop more than 2% before they fucking unlock the world and take whatever actions need to be taken. <laughs> right? Like, so that's what's made me make decisions about my life. Like, like living places, like, like certain companies have decided to build huge ca- campuses, places, Google, Amazon, Facebook, whatever. They, they build campuses in these locations and they're like, and you're like, oh, well, they have to know something. <laughs> like they're not going to spend a billion dollars building a location in North Carolina or Portland, like thinking that that place is going to go down. Right. They think that place is going to go up and they know something. You follow the money. You follow where these giant corporations are putting money and you go, okay, that's the place that's going to be fine. Yeah. Uh, That place. Or they're going to be like, here's a place where we can buy everything dirt cheap, drive it way the fuck up and then bounce. Yeah. Well, that's another thing. (laughs) Yeah. Greed. It's the greed. That's what there is. But they're beautiful facilities. I got to see the the YouTube building in was it Mar Vista? I went to the YouTube building in, in Austin during South by Southwest. It was real nice. I built a castle in there, one of their huge sound stages. That's sick. <laughs> fucking dope. That's sick. Well, since we're talking about events, we might as well just jump to it. Jump to yes, it. Sir. I'm just like I just had like random events here that we could like just like have on the screen while we're That's talking. Cool. But like uh, today's theme is the greatest live event you've ever been to. And so uh, whether it's music or movies or a play or a, like a, a, a street fair, what is the greatest live event you've ever been to, Frank? Okay. I have three. Nice. That I'd, li- I'd like to discuss, if I may. Yeah, yeah. D- d- not, not like back to back. Like discuss one, and then I'll discuss one. Oh, of course, one. of course. I, no, I want to sit here and talk for four hours. <laughs> Get a word in edgewise. So I will start. Um, I saw Slipknot and System of a Down on the Pledge of Allegiance tour in Albany, New York. Okay, I was in there. like in like October. Of 2001. That's 2001. That's sick. So that's when you. Were, that's when you were in college. You went to yeah. So 9/11, but 9/11 had happened like yeah. two to three weeks prior. Yeah. Some like it was. It was that the tour ended up getting canceled uh-huh. because of everything. But like we caught one of their last two shows or whatever. You just and, like you just like literally laid out my next couple of events because they're all 9/11 based now. <laughs> So I I was at a point where I was like, I don't give a shit about anything. And I had kind of made my my reputation amongst these people I had just met as like the crazy one who would just do anything. So yes. I was like, come on, we're rushing down to the pit. And they're like, what? I was like, we're going to run down. We're going to jump the wall. We're going to go to GA. Yeah, like, I watched videos <laughs> about that. <laughs> yeah. well, I've seen it done and I'd seen like I, when I saw Metallica in 98 that everybody rushed and the security guards were destroying people but like the world had just kind of screeched to a halt and I didn't give a shit and I was like I'm getting down there and like it was a whole different vibe though they literally let us down so we did GA the whole time great show Romstein was there too so fires broke out inside the arena and like we were dancing around them but uh the thing I will never forget, Corey gets on right before they do their surfacing encore and he goes on about how hate crime has risen through the roof and like that's fucked up. You can't be punishing like innocent people here just because something happened over there or whatever. But wow. then he wraps himself in an American flag and does all of surfacing like that and just – as far as images go, a masked monster looking thing wrapped in an American flag screaming, fuck it all, fuck this world. Huh. I was just like, I'll never forget this moment. Holy <laughs> shit. <laughs> that does sound pretty sick. It was it was just like it was the entire night was awesome. It was such a dope release. And like I was in the pit the whole night. I'm pretty sure I got concussed. Concussed. Uh, 
Slipknot, yeah. Slip, I've seen, I think I've seen Slipknot. I'm pretty sure I've seen Slipknot at an Ozfest. But System of a Down is one of those bands from that time period of my life where I was like, there are a few bands I need to see, and System is one that I've never seen. I would fucking murder to see them. I've like, seen them like three or four times. I don't even like them that much, but they put on a great show. I love System of a Down. I couldn't even. And I love Surge. I love Surge's solo albums even. And so they, they just released a couple of songs last year for the first time in like many years. And so hopefully they'll tour. But even so. They're, they're touring with Korn right now. Oh, really? Are they? I didn't even know. Right now. They probably are coming to New York soon. I would go see it. I would, oh, well, you're in Florida. But I would. Uh, here's the thing. No, even if so, it's on a weekend, I'll come up. I don't give a shit. Maybe we'll make that happen. And that'd be real cool. But it's like, hopefully it would be sick. And I'm sure it would. It would. But I feel like it's like, I didn't see them in the time frame that I needed to see them. I'm like, oh, I'm going to go see them now. Like, 20 I mean, years later. So like, I, don't, I don't know about System, but I saw Corn in August and they still fucking kill it. They still, they're still so powerful that the whole place shakes. And I'm they sure. Still- no, I'm totally oh. sure. I, I have no doubt. I, I'm not, I'm not questioning whether they perform well or not. I'm, I'm questioning whether it's like, as meaningful to me it take, it, it'll it'll take you back <laughs> yeah that makes sense because like because like seeing those songs because they bring it and i'm gonna just extend the assumption to system because they still fucking crush it live seeing live music to me is always a thousand and six percent more powerful than listening to it yeah in the other form and watching them still feel it and believe it and play it as manically it will jumpstart you because even seeing corn and I love corn. I keep talking about this band, but like seeing them live watching them, I was like, Holy shit. I forgot how good these guys are. Like, you know, when a band has it and they don't lose it, it still means something. It don't matter when that's, that's, uh, that's so true. That's very true. Um, see what I've done is like, like we talked about this on a, on a previous episode, where like uh, when we talked about corn, I was like, I'm not. I, so our parents talked about the Beatles when we were younger, and you're talking about corn. I feel like I haven't necessarily been like a huge advocate of the bands who I liked when I was younger, and so instead, like like the biggest like shows to me recently, like I seen D- Robert DeLong at this small ass bar in Austin, and Robert DeLong is a is a is a is a musician who I found on like Bandcamp or something, okay. and um, and I read about him at the time. Here, I'll, I'll share this this uh, this other thing. I read about him at the time, and I was like, I was listening to his music, but I was like really into it. I was like, this is it's like half like techno, half like it's weird music, and uh, he makes some of his music with Wii controllers, Wii remotes. I read. Okay. About, I read about this online. It's like he 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 programmed a computer so where he presses buttons on the Wii remotes or when he shakes the Wii remotes, it like rattles, like rattle or like do a drum thing or like he could like wave. He like it. up to a, a sampler type of a situation almost. Exactly. So you could do whatever the fuck you want with it. Right. And so I read about that one day as I had found him on Bandcamp with two thousand followers. Like that's that's like finding someone. That's like like discovering someone in the muck and i was like i was like i couldn't even imagine the the ability to see him live because i didn't think that he would ever be popular enough to play live <laughs> like or to play nationally because right. i'm sure he played live but he didn't play nationally at the time and so four or five years later uh he he, he did a show where uh like right right near me and my friend right near where I was living in Austin, me and my friend Sarah went and seen him. And like, it was five years later. The Wii was so old at that time, but he took the Wii fucking remote out and he started playing with it on stage. And bro, I can't tell you, I was like fucking freaking out. Like, (laughs) like, 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 I mean, I am, I I dreamed it was such, because, because I love Nine Inch Nails. I love Radiohead. I love Marilyn Manson and I've seen them all and I've dreamed about seeing them and I've seen them, but I dreamed about seeing this like real small scale act that like I never thought would actually be big enough to be around me. 
And now he's big. As much as you don't know him, he's big now. Right. Like, <laughs> and like, and so the day I got to see him, he was still selling his own merch. He was at his merch table. That's awesome. And fucking, and fucking he, I, we're right up on stage as he's doing his Wii controller shit. And like, bro, it was fucking epic. Like, that's the, as I just expressed, some of the biggest shows to me have been Nine Inch Nails and Radiohead. It's like, it's like a religious experience. You're like, you're like, you feel yeah. it. But uh-huh. like, this was one of, this was like, this was like a punk experience. Like, I feel like a lot of people don't, like, we're, a lot of people aren't even looking for it anymore because like, you just don't think it exists anymore. I found this guy online before he was famous. I watched right. him play with a, re, a, a Wii remote control at a bar and now he is becoming a national act. That's that punk shit. And that's, so that's, that's one cool. of my favorite recent shows. That's cool. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> a lot of that. So yeah, yeah. I, I said I appreciate the hell out of that. Yeah, fuck yeah. <laughs> yeah that's right, man. So, yeah. yeah, that's super cool. I'm still, like, just kind of ruminating on that for a minute. Lately, I've only been going to see Nostalgia Act bands or just bands that I've liked for, like, 20 years. I haven't really gotten to see so i mean for the last like seven or eight years i've slowly been becoming more and more obsessed with fantagram yeah and i now i fucking love this band as much as any reverence i have for like pearl jam or slipknot or anything like that i love this band on that level that's it Um, i have not gotten a chance to see them yet because right when i like the dam finally broke and i was like I need to fucking see this band. That is when COVID hit. Uh-huh. And so like now for years, they just haven't been touring and I'm like, fuck go on tour. But what sucks is Florida gets skipped a lot. Yeah. So, like bands go Georgia, Texas, or they go like, you know, they'll hit like Louisiana and then skip right over to South Carolina. Like this area is like a no man's land. So I, I hope that when they fucking come around at all, I'll even get a chance to, to go like i'm gonna have to drive to like north carolina to go see them or something i feel like and i will because fuck that that'd be dope that'd be fun story yeah fuck yeah you gotta make a trip so 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 then (laughs) i'll just i'll tell my second story and then you tell your second story then my okay so because i didn't even think about this one until now fucking the longest drive i ever took uh watch the throne I drove from from Virginia to North to to uh, uh, Louisiana to to New Orleans. I drove sixteen fucking hours to see wow. Jay, to see Jay Z and Kanye West. How was uh, it? What was that? How was it? It was fucking epic. It's amazing. It was like this. this so as as far as like like Jay Z and Kanye are not friends anymore. I know you're not like a, a rap person. But like seeing Watch the Throne is the equivalent of seeing Marilyn Manson and Trent Reznor together. Like that's epic as fuck. I mean, I definitely, I definitely understand the significance. Like, I, yeah, I like, appreciate it or not. <laughs> yeah, no, I do. I mean, I like rap songs. I don't like rap albums. Is the best way I can like describe my relationship with the genre. Yeah. I will listen to a random song by Lil Wayne or Eminem or Run the Jewels or any such. I love Run the Jewels. M- yeah, fuck yeah. And I'll be like, that was awesome. And then I'll get a couple more songs by them. But then ultimately, I'll be like, I don't need the whole album of this. But then they'll put out their next album. And again, I'll be like, yeah. And I'll get into like half of it. You know I, I, I can get the whole album down. I love Run to Jewels. I love fucking, I love everyone you just said. I love Lil Wayne's newest album. I can. I really can. And so I, this- like I try to. I, and like, I try and every now and then I'll just get into like a hip hop mood where I'll just go download a few tracks. Like, you know what? I can use a little bit more method man in my life. Let me get, <laughs> you know, like, but that's still, that's still going down that like um, nostalgic for high school shit. Like run yeah. the jewels. Is that like new style shit? Yeah, run the jewels is, is new shit. I, you know what, man? Like rap is hard for me because the subject matter m- is what gets me. So like if they're talking about like the hustle or just like that straight on the shit well, stuff, 
Yeah, I can find thing. all that. Most of, them aren't. Most of them aren't. Like Logic's my favorite rapper. Logic doesn't. Logic talk, raps about fucking anything he fucking fucking wants. Spose is a good ass rapper. Yeah, and that's what I'm saying. Those are the ones I gravitate towards. I don't get into like all the. I don't know. Yeah, the the but, but at the same time, I do actually. I'm not gonna. I do get into the Jay Z, Kanye, fucking. Like, I like crazy like stuff. Lil Wayne, like the, the, the like the I'm um, a badass. I'm better than like the, that like swag shit. Yeah, I'm into that. That's cool. Oh, yeah. Yeah. They put and, together and, some and, shit like that. And so and so this show, we drove down to North, New Orleans, 16 hour drive. We went to an absinthe bar, drank absinthe, showed up at some fucking coliseum in New Orleans, waited till 11 p.m. and watched them fucking throw the craziest show I've ever seen. Oh, and it was on Jay Z's birthday. It was on Jay Z's birthday, so like I can't even tell you this show was fucking epic. Like <laughs> it was December fifth, and uh, or December fourth is his birthday. Excuse me, and fucking uh, yeah, this was one of the most crazy. And then I had to drive back. We left. Sat- I had to drive back to be home for work by Monday, so I had to drive sixteen hours home. So it was sixteen hours there, see a show, sixteen hours home, go to work. Uh, but it was worth it. <laughs> yeah, that's fucking rad. So that's my second show. What, what's your? What will be the second one that that comes? So, to mind? I think the most religious experience I ever had in a concert was the, the second or third time I saw Pearl Jam. Yeah. Okay. I saw them at Madison Square Garden, and we bought tickets. I got tickets behind the band, so we were fuck all close. Because they were cheap because they were literally behind the band. So we were looking at the back of them for most of the night. They turned and played one song facing us. But, like, mostly we were behind them. But we were right there. And um, they came out. They opened with my favorite fucking song, which I had yet to see them play, which was amazing. Then they did the thing that I always wanted to see them do, where Eddie comes up to the mic and he goes... This next song is called All Night because we're going to fucking play All Night tonight. <laughs> and then they jumped into that. At a, at a certain point in the middle of Daughter, they break down into a jam and a Let's Go Rangers chant broke out in the middle of the place. And he, like Eddie was doing it too. And then in the middle of Better Man, okay, they were rocking so hard that the Madison Square Garden was bumping beneath my feet you could feel the arena fucking pulsing and would you, was- compare, would you compare pearl jam to like uh what what 70s band would you compare pearl jam to as far as like magnitude i don't even know who magnitude is no i'm saying you're, as far as magnitude no, no 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 like as far as everything as far like like if you were to like lo- long longevity like how long they've lasted popularity the way that they still have an ongoing fan base but aren't necessarily popular with the the the, the culture like rolling um, stones like jefferson's I, airplane like what so, kind of band? i think that's a hard question i don't know that they have a direct correlation because they've already outlasted most bands that with the exception of the stones i think bruce springsteen as much as, as much as I don't even really like Bruce Springsteen's music, uh-huh. I think that that is – they're the modern-day version of Bruce Springsteen and the East Street Band. Okay. They bring the house down everywhere they go. They play four- and five-hour shows, and they change the set list every night everywhere they go. They don't give a fuck. Eddie and the whole the whole band is outspoken and socially active and – they all support different charities and are all out there doing nothing but good things with their success and their fame and their money. And they, they got so super fucking popular and they were like, fuck this. We're taking a step back. They do whatever they want and they'll tour forever. And I feel like the only person from that time frame that still is going and has that level of like power is probably Bruce. Because I feel like even the Stones, I bet the Stones probably have to play the same shit night after night, you know. I would like, imagine so. Yeah, they're ready for their their uh, their uh, 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 
what is they're it deep, called? They're deep cuts. No, I was going to say they're Vegas residency. Yeah. <laughs> well, I, feel like, I feel like the Stones play the same set list all the time because they probably have just like so many songs that people are like, no, you need to play this or I'm going to be pissed. But Pearl Jam has always just, no, we're playing anything we feel like any night. Deal with it. So yeah. they just can. Uh, but they're so fucking good, you know? And yeah, so that night, and they played for like four and a half, five hours. They turned the lights on, and he was like, whatever, we'll pay the overtime for the crew. We don't give a shit. <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah, it was dope. So, so most of the best shows you've been to have been like Coliseum type stuff, like big, big shows. Like what's, what's um, have you been to like a show that's been like very like intimate, like that they felt? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, that's a different you- vibe. So, so, then, so then you 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 close out your third pick, and then I'll pick my third pick. Okay. So, so, what you, so if you're third pick, what would be the more intimate vibe? Okay, more intimate vibe. I saw Boy Hits Car, Drowning Pool, and Finger Eleven. At you're a West. fucking you're a fucking genius. You're a retard genius because that's literally the show I was just thinking about. <laughs> I don't mean to say retard, like, but fuck, bro. That's literally – I was there at that show. Yeah, we, went, we went with, like, 20 people. Anthony, uh, It wasn't 20 people. It was just a tiny bar in the city. It was, like, 100 or 200 people. But yeah. that was right – that was a month before the Drowning Pool singer died. Like, we – and so and so then – so we saw him at that, that, that bar in the city, and then I went and seen him at – at Ozfest, like two months later, and then he died. Yeah, basically, yeah. And Finger Eleven. God, I'm so happy you just brought that up. <laughs> show, and that was like a tiny ass bar. Um, another show like that, I went to. No, was, no, no. Keep talking about that course. show, bro. That was a good show. Yeah. Boy hits car, and here's the reason I'm so glad you just brought it up. And it's boy hits car, like their their sound broke down, and like they so and, like, and, and, and he and he sat there and he did like a yoga stance on stage for like thirty minutes. Yeah, <laughs> and then he and then he did like an electric flute. You remember when he played the electric? Yes, flute? yes I fucking do. And yo, know, bro, let me tell you this: I've been trying to remember Boy Hits Car's name for so long because like I didn't remember their name for the longest time. They never made another album. No, and I have that <laughs> album. I listen to those songs all the time. As I watch the sun fuck the ocean is one of the best metaphors. Oh, I'm gonna I've fucking ever listen. Fucking heard. This. I'm gonna listen. I'm so fucking happy right now that you just brought this up. <laughs> you I'm have so no glad idea. I give you the gift of boy hits car. Say that again. I'm so glad I could give you the gift of boy hits car. Yeah, for real. No joke, bro. Uh, and the fact that we were both at that show because, it, like I said before, I don't remember who I went to shows with. Let me ask you this. The the one show that stands out the most to me that you and I went to together because there was a tiny group of us was do you remember when we went and saw a perfect circle together? Yeah, of course. <laughs> I've never fucking seen Tool. And so I, I bring that up all the time. Anytime I talk about Tool, I'm like, but I've seen a perfect circle. <laughs> and he was wearing like a blonde wig, a speedo, and like fucking galoshes. Uh-huh. Bro. That was so fucking crazy. I, I've told you that I went to Alex 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 Gray's Alex compound. Gray's. Yeah, yeah. Hazo who does all the tool we got to go hang out there bro yo we have to go there like <laughs> it's so fucking sick um yeah but again i didn't even remember that you and i had went to had been together to, i had no idea i have no idea who i went to who i went with to any show it's all such a blur <laughs> it's such a blur it's such a blur and especially not at that point but then in my mid 20s i got blackout drunk at every show i went to i had to go see isis a second time because the first time i saw isis the tape was not in the vcr (laughs) i'm told that in the middle of being 10 feet from the band i turned to one of my friends like oh shit we gotta get going we're gonna miss isis and they were like there they are i was like oh like i yeah we used to we used to get crazy for a little while that makes sense. Yeah, I had so many different options to t- tell about the third bro. We could sit here and talk about live music for fucking days. Ever. I could talk about the three times I've seen Green Day. I could talk about fucking like all the fucking different. Uh, 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 what is that punk show on Randall's Island called? Warp Tour. All the different Warp Tours I went to. Like, to I only went to Oz- one Warp Tour. I went to a boatload of Ozfests though. Yeah, a ton of different Ozfests. I went to all the different 
uh, dysfunctional family picnics. I fucking, I TP'd Fred Durst at a dysfunctional family picnic. Ah, I was at that one at Jones Beach, right? I mean, there, there was, I was at a bunch. I went to the first five at Jones Beach. Yeah, I was at the three. Was with the glow sticks when he was like, "Fuck those glow sticks!" And we Bro, all. Threw- you were there. I was there. Was. With, I was there with my cousin. I was there with my cousin Vincent, my cousin, my cousin Marissa, and her boyfriend or something. And and we were up in the the balcony. And Rob Zombie was there. Yeah, um, and they flew Rob Zombie in last minute. Yeah, yes, yeah, because because Courtney Love, because Courtney Love. Yeah. Yes. And yes. I fell asleep <laughs> watching Jimmy Eat World. Yes. Um, yes Courtney Love dropped out last minute, because, yeah. so they they brought Rob Zombie yeah, in. Bro. Him in he was on tour like up the road. <laughs> so so so. Then, that was when he had Blasco and Riggs, and Riggs had the blood filled guitar. They would fucking dump on him. So, so, so we were up on the fucking balcony and my cousin, me and my cousin Vincent were like 12 and my cousin Marissa was like 16 or 17 or 18 or something. And and one of her friends left early and was like, yo, here's tickets to, to go down into the, like the pit pretty much. Jones Beach doesn't have a pit, but you know what I mean? It's the floor and, area. Yeah. And so we went down to the floor area for, for, for Limp Biscuit, and everyone was throwing the, the, the sticks. Both yeah, and the TP, and a thing of TP landed right next to me, and I re re threw it, and it wrapped right around Fred Durst. Me and my cousin, fucking, we were hugging and high fiving like I had just done some fucking magic trick, yo. Rage this Against the Machine fucking closed out that show. Rage Against the Machine closed out the bro. That's the only time I've ever seen Rage Against the Machine. Yeah, same, me too, and it was awesome. It was, oh no! But yo, let me tell you this. So I'm gonna end it with uh, that's the only time I've ever seen Rage Against the Machine. But I saw Tom Morello in a fucking parking lot two years ago. <laughs> like you saw him like walking by, or you saw him? No, oh, I saw him perform during South by Southwest in a fucking surprise performance in a parking lot. No one knew yeah. it was gonna happen. Him, Quest Love, and K Flay showed up in a parking lot set up a stage and threw the most insane fucking sh- uh, for free for free first off and there was free beer you could just walk up to a table and grab free beer so quest love k flay tom morello in a parking lot on a stage with free beer is the greatest show That's i've ever seen in my entire life right <laughs> yeah <laughs> all right so check it out first of all look at this i have all my concert tickets here Ah, I wish I still did. I I but threw that out many years. In amongst that, check this shit out. Can you see what this is? I can. I don't know what it is though. Oh, <clears throat> I went and saw Alien Ant Form, Spine yeah. Tank, and Orgy at the Vanderbilt. Have... Okay, and where did you see them? The Vanderbilt. I I seen Alien Ant Farm once, but I don't. They think tour, I Alien Ant Farm. There were at this time Alien Ant Farm was on tour with fucking everybody. We yeah. saw Alien Ant Farm. I, I think I seen them at Hammerstein. I don't think it was Vanderbilt. Yeah, Vanderbilt was on the island. It was in like Hot. I know. I I've, I've seen I seen a bunch of shows at Vanderbilt, but not. So, Spine Shank comes on, and it was like me and Bubba and Jared and Joe. Like we were like at this point seasoned like pit people. So Spine Shank came on, and we opened everything up, and we went nuts. And at some point, I got my nose busted open or whatever. But the dude on stage was calling. He's like, I want to see blood. (laughs) So I fucking ended up getting busted open. My nose is bleeding. I kept this. And then their set ended. Like, we're going to be in the back signing autographs. So this is my bloody nose napkin. Oh, no. I was like, I brought it to the band. And I went, you wanted blood? There it is. There you go. And like they were all signing it, and so I fucking went to high school the next day, and I found Mr. Bosch, and I was like, "Bosch, do you have laminate?" And he was like, "Yeah, why?" I was like, "I need to laminate something." So I fucking laminated my blood. This thing is twenty fucking years old. That's amazing. Like bro. Years That's old. Amazing. It's my blood yeah. and the signatures of the band Spine Shank. Fucking a, bro. That's yeah. that was a dope show. <laughs> the bloodiest show I ever seen was Kitty and Fear Factory. That's a that's a fucking whooping. So, I watched I watched a security guard bust someone's teeth out and fucking blood and teeth on the floor, and I was like, "Well, then this <laughs> is <laughs> so this the, is a show." <laughs> the most I ever got my ass kicked at a show was at a Deftone show. Oh it was, yeah, it was Taproot Incubus and Deftones. I think I but, might have been there. What had happened was. 
It was that show was like November. I was definitely there, bro. I yeah, was definitely been, fucking there. <laughs> been, but Slipknot had played Halloween. It was Slipknot, Hatebreed, and Mudvayne. And that was the craziest shit I'd ever seen. So That's then, like funny. three weeks later, we're at that Deftone show, and I was all like, "This ain't gonna be shit compared to what I what had happened last time." Yeah. And I got throttled. My I got a black eye. I went home, and my dad was like, "I'm never letting you go into the show into the city." Where was it? <sighs> Roseland. Yeah, I think I'm whichever sure. whichever one had the upper level that the guy from Tapper fucking stage dove down. Amberstein had the upper level. I yeah. Think. But, so that was it. I got my ass kicked. It was <laughs> awesome. I seen Deftones just three years ago at, at uh, Austin City Limits. Nice. And, uh, it's interesting to see those bands like uh, you know years and years later, and they still fucking they still rock out. <laughs> I saw them. I saw Deftones maybe f- six years ago, but at the time I wasn't into their new stuff at all. Yeah. So like, and that stuff is all at a very different tempo, and it's just it's different. Right. I love I love it now. I really do. But at the time, I had no idea. So like, I was just like, "What the fuck is this that they're playing? It's all just really slow and droney, and I don't know any of it. This sucks." And I was like disappointed because I was so stoked. You got to take time to get into it. Yeah. So well, yeah, and I hadn't taken the time yet. <sighs> But like I don't know, so many people were like, "The new Deftones albums are great," and I was like, "There must be something to it." Let me let me fucking wrap my head around it. So now I'm waiting for them to come along, and they're one of the bands that just went on tour and skipped Florida. They're going on tour with Gojira, and I forget who else. Gojira, yo. So and- let's figure out a show. Let's figure out a show. Whether oh, yeah. you want to come to New York or whether we could travel and meet somewhere, let's figure out uh, a show. To well- go- the, my first feeling is that we should check out what the Jones Beach schedule is because yeah. A, I'm coming up for the summer anyway, and B, uh, that's legit my favorite place to go see a show. Very good tr- place, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So we should we should see what's there first, and if there's something good there, then I will definitely go to see something at Jones Beach with you. Fuck yeah, bro. And so, if not, we'll just kind of figure it out. Hell yeah. I would be willing to meet you in another part of the country. Like, like I said, my my third, I drove 16 hours to see Kanye. Like yes. <laughs> I've driven very far for shows. So let, let's let's wrap the episode up and then we can continue talking. This has been Frank. And Frank. And we are frankly. <laughs> Frank and, then, and this has been a pretty good episode where we've talked about our favorite events. So keep uh track of us as we talk about shit or not, because we're not yeah. we're that entertaining. And if you're a Tampa person and you're listening, come see me at the Five Deuces Galleria on Saturday. That's what's good. That is what's good.